Well, good afternoon, and uh, I want to welcome Ranjit Vig at this time uh, from the uh, travel and hospitality industry. We just had a fairly uh, detailed conversation uh, around India and Brussels, and uh, one of the things we were talking about that came out, and then I was the one that triggered that discussion, was about tourism, uh, how tourism can tri trigger a lot of uh, bilateral trade uh, and other stuff between India and Brussels, and since you're from that industry, I was wondering your perspective on how you see uh, tourism, what are the trigger points, what are the opportunities, where we are, what we need to do so that we can take it to the next level uh, between India and Brussels. So, Ranjit, if you well, are um, <coughs> Well, tourism is hand in glove with trade. So if you do trade in a destination, you're bound to be visiting the destination and you've got to bring people in and, in and out of the destination. Um, Brussels is a very strategic location now for uh, uh, trade and for investment and for tourism. Uh, we've seen over the period of time uh, Europe's been a priority for Indians to go to UK and then followed up with France and so on and so forth. But uh, being travelers uh, today, they, they, it's with the connectivities which the destination provides, which is very critical to any destination growth, um, we see Brussels to be a very strategic location uh, uh, for Belgium to grow as tourism uh, between India and uh, with Belgium. So uh, we've seen that with, uh, with the airlines uh, making huge investments and in coming in there, Jet Airways for one. Um, you have uh, connectivity in from every uh, part of Europe coming in there. So today when you see Indians coming to Europe, uh, gone are the days when they wanted to have uh, 12 uh, stamps of the different uh, countries Visa. uh, of visas is the Schengen, and now you get in there and you visit where you'd like to go. So there's a huge opportunity there, uh, which uh, is building, and it creates opportunity uh, back into India as well. I have a very quick question for you, Ranjit, because Francois is from the Brussels Economic uh, Chamber, and if you had to have your wish list of what uh, you would want to see from them to promote tourism, what would be those few things that you have in mind that could further this very quickly? Uh, I think it's very uh, clear um, what what do travelers look for uh, in a destination. It must have uh, historical value to offer. It must have a language which uh, easily helps people to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be friendly and welcoming. Mm -hmm. And gastronomy is always critical. Uh, Shopping is one of those things which used to be high priority on the Indians is not anymore as a must-do kind of a thing. It's the experiences that people need to have. So I, I think those are the areas that we would look forward to exposing to Indians that we are a welcoming country. We offer all of these. Come try us out. Good. Uh, I, I think um, so there's a shift in the consumer uh, mindset in terms of shopping being no longer on the top four, what I heard from you is the experience, yes. it's safety, it's uh, historical values. Uh, if I would ask, flip this to you, mm -hmm. Francois, your question as to um, he's from the uh, hospitality industry. If you had a wish list of uh, what would you want to see from the Indian government or private sector or tourism uh, background, what would that be? Yeah. Um, Which you feel is a bottleneck mm -hmm. at this point, and you can go take it to the next level. Um, well, I think that um, already in Belgium, I think people really have an interest for India. Uh, we had a, a wonderful um, cultural festival called the Hopalia uh, that took place uh, in Brussels, where you had, I think, about 60 events uh, about Indian culture. Um, so I think that people are already quite aware of the. Um, the, the wonderful country that India is. Uh, I think you can always do more in terms of uh, um, promoting yourself. Um, maybe sometimes people are uh, a bit scared of, uh, of India because it's such a big country, uh, you know. Um, and I think uh, people are not always aware of the differences because uh, India is the a diversity. Really, yeah, the diversity, exactly, of, of India. So I think you can play on that and show that it's not just one uh, culture, but within India you have so many different cultures. And uh, if you're uh, in the north and the south, it's totally different and that makes uh, like uh, a very interesting destination. You know, Francis, I'm, I'm always very tempted to use the word that sometimes they say India is not a nation but like a civilization even today. With such diverse culture we have and 
for us it, also, when we travel across, we feel that diversity, which is a pleasure and an experience. It's so, a continent by itself. It's yeah. a continent yeah. by itself. You're, you're bringing different cultures to be exposed, uh, different uh, food habits, uh, gastronomy is completely mm -hmm. different all across the country. The colors that you would see, the cultures that you would experience, the dialects that you would go past, it's as, as large as what Europe as a continent offers you. And, and I, I wanted to just also congratulate you on the Europalia because uh, I did get to see the body uh, in Indian art uh, exhibition which was curated uh, through I think 53 different destinations in India which were reached out to, to, to bring the pieces uh, together. And uh, I think to get something curated like this where you're not just seeing stone figures, yes they're beautiful but you know they don't have meaning and then there are names which are unpronounceable. But to put it in a form of, so this is how women have been depicted in Indian art through the ages. It had many sub themes like that. Or indeed, what is it about the body uh, in its uh, portrayal in art through the years? And bringing it together, as Europalia actually enabled through Namana Huja, the curator, was such a brilliant idea that it would be great to see more cultural exchanges of this order because you don't just bring it to Brussels, you actually give it to India as well. Because I saw the exhibition in Delhi, so thank you. Good. And, you know, I think we're sitting at some very big opportunities here between India and Belgium, Brussels in particular, as we were trying to talk in the previous session that uh, an event like the Horasis, if it uh, were to happen in Brussels, uh, again, some cues of trying to get some me more media industry, some filmmaking industry, apart from the trade, it will all come together for, for a much more close I work. From when you talk of that, uh, the uh, key facilitator, in my opinion, would be that the location of the destination is so amazing that it will attract a huge number of delegates to come out of convenience just itself. Um, beyond that, of course, the multiple interests which exist there and uh, uh, getting exposed to Brussels uh, as a city, as a destination for Indians who once get there and uh, get the flavor of it, uh, you know, you get Indians once, they're just coming yeah. back in mm -hmm. hordes. So Absolutely. that's good news for you there yeah. as well. Yeah. We just talked about how Switzerland made it so big yeah. in the past 10 years, thanks to some movies. And you know, there's so many Indians who go there. I mean, you know, you have better yes. numbers than me. Yes. I'm just looking at when I travel through summer, it's like crazy. Yeah. Bollywood is uh, one of those routes to just expose a destination and so long, so far, uh, each time uh, a Bollywood movie has been shot in a destination, you've seen the experience with Spain. Yeah. After well, she just talked about yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's certainly a, a great way to go forward. So, Franchon, we, we've got the right uh, background of all this debate and we've got our hearts in the right place and we're looking forward at the opportunity. But if I had to ask you one challenge mm -hmm. that you believe is uh, existing mm -hmm. for people from uh, Belgium to go to India, mm -hmm. what would that one challenge or, or the doubt or apprehension that they might have in their mm -hmm. minds? Just one, very quickly. Um, well, I think that over the last year, maybe India had um, some bad press uh, here in Europe about um, maybe the treatment that some women uh, faced in in India, and I think that's a pity because it just um, individual events. I would say that happened, but it was in the press. So I think that's there. Uh, I hope the authorities will uh, try to. to that's solve a this very problem. valid point mm -hmm. because yeah. it it was all over the world, yeah. and I think uh, we need to address that yes. very correctly and set the right tone and take corrective actions for safety point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll flip this question to you, Ranjit. I mean, outbound? Uh, well, I, uh, the way I look at it is that uh, uh, Belgium doesn't stand out amongst the other uh, uh, Benelux countries uh, for the Indians to begin with. They would go to Amsterdam or they would go to other European countries. So the visibility of being created, uh, uh, a lot more needs to be done in India to showcase what Belgium has to offer. Offer. Mm -hmm. that's so true. that's, sure. there you go. So gentlemen, I think uh, we've closed this with, with both perspectives of opportunity as well as someone challenge. And I think we look forward to a more closer working on this vertical. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And have a good stay here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.